Good morning my loves, welcome back. We're gonna do a vlog today. I feel like it's been ages since I last vlogged. And although not much has happened, there are a few things to update you on and just get back into the swing of things. We're doing it the old fashioned way today and beginning the vlog from bed because I have not been very strict with myself about getting up recently um, because I know that very soon Come March, there is going to be a little baby waking me up very early in the morning, all through the night. And so I'm getting my sleep whilst I can. I'm having pretty poor quality sleep throughout the night um, as well. So if I can have an extra couple of hours in bed in the morning, then I just do it. I just let myself do it at the minute. It's a luxury. Um, and I know that not all new mums, pregnant mums can achieve such a thing so I'm making the most of it and then I like to kind of lie in bed for a little bit as well before I get up it's also a lockdown there is not a lot happening obviously I have got bits to do but um yes just wanted to reassure any of you that are also struggling in the mornings that you can and should take some extra time for yourself if you need it and if that is an option for you. So yes, so I've already had some crumpets in bed, courtesy of Zach, thank you very much Zach, um, and a tea, and I'm gonna do some emails, I think, from bed. Again, if I do them from bed, they get done. If I don't do them from bed, they don't get done. Um, so we're gonna do that. And then I do a little clear up. Um, today I really wanna pack my hospital bag. I don't plan on doing loads and loads of pregnancy baby content um, but seeing as we're in a lockdown and there is really not much else happening and obviously in the vlogs I just talked to you about what's going on in my life um, it does seem like there's probably going to be a fair bit of it over the next few months at least as that is the kind of major thing that's happening in my life at the moment so yes I hope you don't mind too much oh for those of you who did not watch my top 2020 books video you might be wondering where I am this does not look like my normal bed or bedroom um I'm at the farm have been here for many weeks now we're sort of um here for lockdown now which wasn't intentional but we are um and Zach and I have been staying in library barn um which is just opposite the main house it's all one address we're one household with my family still but we just have been in this building basically just a separate building um which has been really nice for us to have our own space a little bit as well so yes we're very lucky to be here we've got a little mini kitchen in this barn um and also our own bathroom and everything in the main house we would usually share with Indy so it is nice to be in here it is a bit chillier than the main house because it's still waiting on a few things including a stove um so we're working with the radiators at the moment but it's quite a big space um it's a barn yes it can get a little bit chilly in here is the only thing there will be a proper stove in here at some point so yeah parts of it are not finished completely but it is certainly very habitable and it's been really, really lovely for us. Um, so that's where I am. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I was talking about how I wanted to pack my hospital bag today. So I thought I would show you what I was going to put in it, more or less. It's not really going to be like a helpful video, <laughs> I don't think. Like, you need to pack this because obviously I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a first time. I'm a first timer. Um, and you're all gonna tell me I'm overpacking, but I just thought it might be a nice activity for us to do together today So that's what we're gonna do. Um, I am 32 weeks now, so we're getting on I know some people would have had their hospital pack bag packed for weeks already Some people are probably still not doing it until they get to about 36 say seven weeks um, But I've read so many birth stories now and <laughs> you never know when these babies are gonna turn up um, I hope she stays in until I'm full term, obviously, but you never know. So I'm going to pack that today. Um, I bought all the stuff, almost all the stuff I think has arrived, um, various postpartum bits and whatever. But first, I'm going to do my emails. So I'm out of bed finally. Um, I even did you a five minute makeup today. So count yourselves lucky because... 
<laughs> I have not put makeup on properly. Yeah, I thought you were talking to me. No, I wasn't talking to you. You're not lucky enough to get makeup set every day. You just have to live with a normal face. Yeah, I've worn makeup like a handful of times since we arrived here. Um, but I just, yeah, did a really quick five minute makeup. I used this Arborian CC cream, which they sent me the other day. And I've been really enjoying using it again, actually. Used to use it ages ago. Bare Minerals Concealer. Bare Minerals. Um, Strength and length brow gel and a little bit of Glossier Boy Brow as well. What else did I use? Used the Bare Minerals Strength and Length Mascara with a little bit of this Hourglass one that I've been trying as well. The Hourglass Unlocked on top. Sorry, I'm out of breath. Oh my god, pregnant life. Okay. Lips. I used my Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk, which is running low. They're not really considered cruelty free anymore, so I'm just sort of using that up and then I'm gonna have to think again. Um, and yes, that's it. Then I used the Pillow Talk lipstick as well, which I also had a hand around. Uh, blush, I used an hourglass one, the diffused heat, and then I also used Freck. I mean, it's hardly the world's most beautiful makeup, but just thought I'd put some on. Every day I am in an outfit like this, which is a large jumper and whatever trousers, pants, tracky bees, whatever, are clean. <laughs> um, I don't have a full length mirror in this building, which is, you know, travesty for influencers. So <laughs> I can't really see what I'm wearing every day, which is probably a good thing. But yes, just comfort. Comfort, comfort, comfort at the minute. A um, little bump shot. She's definitely feeling big. Uh, like since I've arrived here, when I would have been, I don't know, 20 something weeks, she's grown a lot to feel like. And that's kind of what she's doing for the last few weeks as well as putting on fat. So we're probably gonna grow a little bit more, yes. I feel like I've grown in the last few weeks, particularly. Zach's back from various countryside activities this morning. First he was moving wood. Moving logs. Moving logs. And then he went and fed some cows. I don't know whose cows these are. They're not our cows. Neighbouring farm. Neighbouring farm cows. He's left his four, four cows out. Um, <laughs> so Zach went to feed them some hay and I think he even treated you to a little vlogging of that so I'll insert some footage of some oh, cute some cute little cows. some lunch you're gonna go over to the main house because we don't have a lot of food in our little kitchen mostly breakfast stuff and snacks um, so we're gonna go over there it's kind of it obviously snowed a couple of days ago and it's not looking its cutest it looked really nice when it had first snowed but now it's melting and it doesn't look like it's gonna snow again anytime soon So I've had my lunch, it's time to pack my hospital bag, at least a little bit. I am thinking there are going to be things I'm going to pick up, like just before we go. And I'm going to make a list of those as well, like my headphones, for instance. Not going to pack those right now, that would be pointless. Keep those in my handbag anyway, but 
I'm gonna pack whatever bits I can pack now. I just know you're all gonna tell me I'm overpacking, but let me explain my logic. Okay, so if there's one thing I would recommend to all pregnant people out there, I feel like I've seen a lot of people talk about it, so I feel like you probably already know about it. It is the Positive Birth Company online pack. It's like a course that you can take, lots of videos, course pack, um, various other bits and bobs. It costs £39, I think, and it is one of the best things that I've bought in my pregnancy. Highly, highly recommend it. So it's like a hypnobirthing thing, which I know to anyone that's not familiar with hypnobirthing always sounds a bit kooky but really it's about reprogramming how you think about birth to think of it as something very natural very doable not scary not um, something that you would be incapable of or unable to handle and giving you tools to handle labor because even if you definitely want an epidural and you want all of the pain relief that people can throw at you. You still have to labour at home for quite a long time in a lot of cases. Not all cases, but a lot of cases. So you're still going to experience some contractions, whatever happens. So it's giving you all those tools to deal with labour in general. And also this pack, from what I've read, is particularly useful for teaching you what is actually happening in labour. I'm not sure all hypnobirthing courses have that element, but this one in particular is telling you all about the two different types of um, contractions you're gonna have, basically. Just all the physiological stuff because knowledge is power in these situations. So it's such a good pack. I don't know why I'm talking about this right now. Oh, you're all gonna say I'm overpacking. But anyway, part of the pack is you get access to this private Facebook group. When I initially downloaded it, I didn't even really realize this or pay any attention to it because Facebook groups are not really my kind of thing at this point. It's not, Facebook is not a social media platform that I use that much these days. But I then joined it and what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to read everyone's positive birth stories. It's part of that reprogramming mentality thing to make you feel like even if things don't go to plan, you had a completely different birth to what you imagined, um, you can still think about it positively, use the pack, all the rest of it. And there's all sorts of birth stories on there from people having planned C-sections, emergency C-sections, full on natural home births, um, VBACs, forceps deliveries, like all the different kinds of births people have written about on there and it's so useful, I've been reading them every day. And so I feel like now I have a pretty good idea of how much can change. And it might be that I have to be induced and I might be in the hospital for a few days. It might be that I pack all this stuff and use none of it because it's a super quick labor. So I just have no idea. And I also don't know what my body will do. Obviously, if someone's had a quick labor before, they can kind of imagine they're probably gonna have a similar one again. Um, although you can have really different experiences. So <laughs> I'm packing for all eventualities, which means um, a sort of multi-day experience. So that's why I'm gonna have loads of stuff with me. You can say that's way too much stuff. Maybe it is, but I like to be prepared. <laughs> I don't wanna get there and then be like, I really wish I had this, especially because in COVID times, once Zach is in there with me, I don't think he's allowed to leave again. <laughs> so um, you're gonna have to have everything on you. You can't, you know, pop in and out. Don't know what the best way to do this is. Show you as it goes in or do it in little sections. Let me have a think. Okay, so I'm back. I've done a little bit of organization and I'm gonna put some bits in my bag now. So I thought I'd just talk you through what I'm gonna put in. And then I've also got a list on my phone of things I'm gonna pack last minute and some things I still need to get as well. But let's start with some cute baby clothes. So I ordered a bunch of bits from H&M and from M&S for baby and I basically picked 
all blue and green stuff because I like those colours the best <laughs> and I just wasn't drawn to any of the pink stuff and I was really drawn to all of the blue and green stuff. In fact, apart from today, I rarely wear pink myself. I've got three little sleep suits. This one's got little piggies on. Um, all three of the ones I'm taking with me are zip ones. That one's from M&S and this one. Um, yes, all three of these little sleep suits have little feet and all three have zips. So when I'm tired, delirious, um, or when Zach's tired and delirious, we can just zip her into them. I do have a few poppered sleep suits as well more for daytime, more as like little onesies for daytime. Um, so those are her three little sleep suits. Yes, as you can see, <laughs> the nurses are probably gonna be like, you do know you're having a girl, right? This stuff actually all has to be washed still, so I'm not gonna put it directly in the bag. Um, and then I got stressed and I was like, I don't know if I should be packing extra little outfits. Um, I accidentally ended up buying a tiny little, I think these are for, um, premature babies tiny little vest set so I'm gonna take the one of the small sizes just in case she comes out super small or we go in early um, and I've got little trousers which are more standard newborn size to go with those and then I've also got the same little um, top oh this is the small one <laughs> okay this is the small one I got the same little top in the normal newborn size um, so that's a little outfit to wear together as well if we're just hanging out in the hospital for whatever reason and if she's wearing that then I'm worried she's going to be chilly so I'm packing this little jumper cute 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 this can go over one of her sleep suits as well if she is looking a little cold in the hospital um some socks to wear with the trousers and then finally this is probably overkill but just in case I'm also packing this little um, set. I've heard sometimes they like the babies to be in separates um, early on so that they can kind of have easy access to their belly buttons but I don't know and <laughs> I'm gonna pack this as well. I think this little jumper poppers open all the way down. This is from H&M. It's got little lions on. It's super super cute. So those are the outfits I'm taking. A couple of hats also from h &M. When babies wear little knit hats, my forehead gets itchy for them. So <laughs> I pick jersey hats, even though I know they're slightly less warm. And then for underneath her sleep suits, I've got a few vests as well. These are just from m &S. And then finally, it's gonna be March. It's difficult to tell whether it's gonna be really cold here in the UK or what's gonna be happening. But I have got this little suit um, for carrying her out to the car. Um, and it's got little fuzzy ears as well which is super cute so that's probably overkill but like I said I like to be prepared. I've compiled this list by the way by looking at what my specific hospital asked me to bring using Siobhan of the Positive Birth Company's list that she gives you at the back of the course pack from the NHS list which you can find online. So some of these things I was like mm, do I really need those things but they are on those lists so I thought I'd bring them, but I'm bringing <laughs> these nappies, they're upside down. These are the Eco by Natty, Natty nappies. Um, these are, yes, the small ones for little new people, um, size number one. Then also in this bag where I'm gonna put the nappies, I've got flannels. Again, this is something I didn't think I would necessarily want to bring, but it does say on Siobhan's list, I think the NHS list, and maybe even on my hospital list as well. So I'm bringing them because I do like a cool flannel on the forehead um, and I can tell that's something that I would enjoy. I think a lot of this is gonna be about knowing yourself as well, what you bring and what you think will help keep you calm and relaxed throughout labor. Um, so also in this bag full of random loose stuff, I've also got lots of these big, um, maternity pads, got some pads in here, disposable undies, and I've also got these cool packs. When I'm at home, I would use ice like a normal person. I am a person, when I feel sick or when I feel um, in pain or whatever, I love having something really cold on my forehead. I spent pretty much my whole first trimester after 4 p.m. with um, an ice pack on my head 
because it was helping with the sort of migraines I was getting. I was getting a lot of pressure from the extra blood flow, I presume, and also it really helped with my nausea which I feel like I'm worried I will also experience during labour. Because I obviously don't know what the ice situation is at the hospital, I have got these disposable packs. At home, I would not use them, but I just think they're gonna be um, invaluable to me. And I can wrap these in like a muslin or um, in a flannel or something and put it on my forehead. I think it will make the world of difference. That's kind of specific to me. Um, it depends if you enjoy that sort of thing, if you want to bring something like that. Like, for example, a lot of the lists seem to have fans on them, but I just, I know that for me, a fan is not enough. I need something really icy, like, on my skin. So I'm not bringing a fan, I'm bringing those instead. I'm also bringing these little tea lights. I just got these from Amazon, little tea lights to put around my hospital room to make it feel cozy. I'm gonna dim the lights, put these tea lights around the place um, to make it feel cozy. This is a whole big thing in the hypnobirthing world. Um, I know maybe it seems crazy, but I think for anyone that's done the PBC course, the tea lights are a necessary, a very necessary thing. Then I have three different bags doing three different things which I know, again, you're probably gonna judge me. Um, this first one is my in labor bag. Um, so it's got all the things that I think are gonna help keep me calm and relaxed during labor. Um, we've got an eye mask. I do actually wear eye masks sometimes to sleep and I know that if I'm in a hospital environment, things are happening, things are going on, this will help me. If you're not an eye mask wearer and you've never worn one, probably not worth packing. I've got earplugs. I wear earplugs every night to sleep. So these are a must if I want to get any actual sleep, especially in a hospital where it's much louder normally. Um, so we've got earplugs and also, yeah, these might help me during, they're in my during labor bag, um, just in case I can have a nap <laughs> if I am being induced or something. I've got this little forehead menthol stick to put on your forehead. Again, like I said, I love something cooling on my forehead when I'm feeling not good. Um, and I used this in um, early pregnancy as well and occasionally. Now, a couple of room sprays. We've got the liquid yoga spray by Mamma Mio. Um, lots of you guys recommended this and like this and I couldn't resist, so I got it. Um, it does smell amazing, it smells really, really good. But I've also got one that's a little bit more familiar to me, which is the Diptyque 34. Zach got me this for Christmas a couple of Christmases ago, and we spritz it around our room before we go to bed quite often, and it really makes me feel relaxed, so I think it's gonna be a trigger to making me feel at home in the space that I'm in. Then I've got a face spray. Um, I feel like I'm gonna favor the ice packs, flannels on my forehead, that sort of thing, more than this. But just for a quick relief, um, I thought I would get some. Um, it's just the magical instant body and face cooling spray. But yeah, I reckon I'll probably use the ice packs a bit more. And then I've got some essential oils. Um, and I've also got a carrier oil. I've got some sweet almond oil, which will work as a carrier oil, um, just in case. I wanna do a little bit of essential oil massage, um, but also these are good to sniff. Um, I Googled it and all of these are supposed to be good in labor for various different reasons. I've got Clary Sage, which is still in its packaging because I took it all out of its packaging and um, it started to fill the room with its scent. I don't know whether it's just leaked a little bit or it's just extra strong compared to these three. But um, yes, <laughs> I can kind of sniff it now and I'm trying not to because if you don't know, Clary Sage is supposed to induce labor. Um, we don't want that, we want that during labor, but we don't want it now. Uh, so I've put it back in its plastic packaging because it's really filling my nostrils. Um, but I've also got peppermint, um, which would be really good for nausea when I was feeling sick in my early pregnancy. I really enjoyed using any of the Aromatherapy Associates oils, which had peppermint in it, and lavender as well, which I've also got. Lavender's quite calming as well and soothing. And I've also got mandarin, which is a little bit more like peppy, I feel, if I need something like that. So that's my sort of in labor bag. And I can just say to that, get me the green bag. Next we have my postnatal bag. Um, so in here, I've got more disposable pants, 
I didn't know which ones would fit, which ones I'd prefer, so I've got a few more disposable pants. Not often that I like to use disposable things, but I think there's a time and a place, and I think post-birth might be that time and place. I've got a nipple shield, which I hope I won't have to use, but you never know. Good to have one with me, just in case I do need to use it. Um, I've got the My Expert Midwife Spritz for Bits, because lots of you recommended it. Um, just a nice little spritz down below. Um, also in here I've got loads of breast pads and some nipple cream as well and I'll probably I'll probably again switch to using reusable breast pads and all that kind of stuff long term you know in the immediate aftermath I don't want to be thinking too much about washing and all that kind of stuff. Finally we've got this stand-in bag which is my toiletries and makeup bag. I may switch to using a bigger bag, my usual toiletry bag, um, closer to the, to the time. Uh, so in here there's going to be a lot more stuff but it's kind of stuff I'm going to pack last minute or ask Zach nicely <laughs> to pack for me um, before we go to the hospital because obviously I'm using my makeup and skincare daily at the minute. I don't want to pack it and put it away but I have got some bits in here. I found these um, mini shampoo and conditioners from a long long time ago I um, thought these would be good I imagine it'll be a bit nicer than whatever they've got in the hospital to wash my hair with if I manage to have a shower whilst I'm there contact lenses very important I've also got a shower gel in here and a moisturizer but I will add probably my favorite moisturizer um, in here when we actually go next I'm going to take my speaker and the charger for the speaker because this speaker is fantastic but it does run out of charge really quickly. My dad got me this I think quite some time ago now. So yes this is going to be good for putting music on. Um, I'm also going to bring my headphones because I might want to be in the zone in my headphones. I quite like wearing headphones. Some people are more speaker people, some people are more headphones people. At certain stages I might want to be more interactive <laughs> with Zach and listen to music together. So we've got that and that's more for when you're obviously in a room by yourself, not with other people. I've also got my fluffy dressing gown, which I love, and a towel from home. This seems to be on everyone's list as well. Again, wouldn't necessarily have thought to bring my own towel, but people say it makes a big difference, so we're bringing it. And also slippers, that's another thing. Um, also bringing uh, the little laundry bag that comes in this suitcase anyway, but I would bring a laundry bag of any kind um, because I really don't want to be putting, if baby has dirtied her clothes or if I've got gross dirty stuff, don't want to put it just directly back in my suitcase when I'm packing to go. So, um, just a plastic bag or anything I think would be good. I've not seen that on anyone's lists, but it is a must for me, I feel. <laughs> clothes and things for me, I've got a couple pairs of socks, I've got a t-shirt to go home in to wear with these compression leggings, these from Belly Bandit. I am planning on wearing like a belly wrap kind of thing post birth for various reasons, not just to get back in shape, but also just because I feel like I will feel better a bit compressed as opposed to just letting all my organs fluid around. Um, and there seems to be lots of health benefits to wearing one post birth, whether you have a C-section, whether you have a vaginal birth, whatever happens. So I thought directly after birth, probably not gonna wanna put one on. Um, so I thought compression leggings might be a nice alternative. So I'm bringing these, but also if I really feel like, oh my goodness, that's just the worst possible thing I could put on right now. I don't wanna put compression leggings on. I've just got some <laughs> comfy trousers as well, um, which I could wear instead. I have a couple pairs of PJs. I've got these little eggy ones, which I think you've seen me wear recently. Really like these. This is a t-shirt and shorts combo, um, and that's just for after birth. I think I'll just wanna be, yeah, in something comfy and familiar like that. I've also got these ones, these white company ones, which are so soft and comfy. These also open at the front, so it might be a little bit more useful, um, but they are full trouser and long sleeved. And I, am, I think these wards are probably quite overheated and I am a cold sleeper, like I want to be a little bit chilly. So I've got a couple of pajama options anyway. But for during delivery, I did buy myself my own labour gown. Um, obviously I might just end up wearing whatever the hospital tells me to put on. But um, I thought this would be quite nice, even just for afterwards, as another option for pajamas. It's just Googled 
labour and delivery gown and um, this came up obviously it's got poppers around the front so you can breastfeed and it's got poppers all down the back so if you need to have an epidural or something um, they've got easy access they've got easy access to everywhere <laughs> um, also it's really soft comfy um, so be good during or after I think to change into once I get there um, to get to the hospital Right, my loves, I think that's everything that I've got to pack right now, but I'll read you out. So I've got still to pack. I want, I still need to buy my snacks. I'm going to have healthy and unhealthy snack options. The lists say bring healthy snacks. I definitely think if there's time to treat yourself, it's during labour. <laughs> um, but yeah, sometimes when I eat loads of like sugary snacks, I then just really want something a bit healthier. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring both options. I need to try and think of a good savory option as well because I do get sick of um, sweet snacks sometimes. Need to buy myself some snacks. I was also gonna buy myself some gum just to keep my mouth fresh. I still need to pack my nursing bras. Um, I think all of mine need to wash in a minute. And I don't know whether I need to get a few more anyway because I don't have that many. Um, still need to pack some wipes for baby. Still need to pack a long charger everyone says bring a long 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 charger so still need to pack that um also maybe some drinks still need to pack some fluffy socks a baby blanket some muslins and actually my birth preferences um i've got one of these little folders and i've put the positive birth company um course notes in here just so that if Zach is panicking and doesn't know how to keep me calm, this has all the things that he can do to help get me back into a relaxed place. Um, but I've left a couple sheets at the beginning free to put my birth preferences in, but I still need to write those and print them off. So, but that's gonna be very important. And then things that I'm gonna pack last minute. So those things I'm gonna get in there fairly soon. Um, but things I'm going to pack last minute are a jumper. I'm just going to wear a jumper in. But I love wearing jumpers. They just make me feel cosy and happy. Um, so I want to make sure that I have one to hand. Um, lots of clean knickers. I know I'm probably going to wear disposable knickers afterwards and probably no knickers during labour. Um, but I can't go anywhere without at least like 15 pairs of knickers. I'm just one of those people. I just would find it really difficult not to. Um, and I also have favourite knickers, which I'm probably going to want to bring. So I'm going to put all those in last minute. My AirPods and big headphones. So I've got options there. So makeup. The makeup I'm planning to bring is just a little bit of base, mascara, concealer, blush and lipstick. Nothing crazy. Oh, and something for the brows. Basically, so I can do something similar to what I've done to my face today. Just for afterwards, you know, if you want to make yourself feel a little bit better, take a few pictures. I'm um, going to bring my water bottle, obviously. This never leaves my side. It goes from room to room with me. Um, so, and my water bottle that I use every day has a straw anyway, but they do recommend that you have one with a straw just so someone can like feed it to you. <laughs> um, but yes, obviously that's a last minute thing because I use it all the time every day. Hairbrush, lip balm, camera and camera charger. Obviously using those all the time. Glasses, um, a little bit of skincare. So I'm thinking Miss La Water Serum and a moisturizer, nothing complex, but just to make myself feel nice again. Um, if I can be bothered, again, I might just ne not use it. <laughs> but if I can be bothered, I think it would be nice. Toothbrush and toothpaste. Kindle and a book. My portable charger. I need to make sure that keeps getting topped up. Just in case I need to wander around the room with my phone. As opposed to if I'm sitting down with my phone. Deodorant, an obvious one. Um, my pregnancy pillow. Everyone seems to recommend bringing your own pillows. And my pregnancy pillow is my favourite thing in the world. So I'm going to bring it for comfort. And a hot water bottle as well. Again, that's not something I necessarily would have thought that I would need to bring because you'd think that maybe they would provide that sort of thing. I'm not sure. Maybe they wouldn't. But um, it does seem to be on the lists. So anyway, my loves, that is my hospital bag. There's, so there's still stuff that needs to go in. Um, need to wash baby's clothes and stuff like that. But I'm feeling a little bit better now that I've got at least some stuff in the back. <laughs> um, 
and we can be ready to go if need be. Taking my hair down again. Sometimes it just gets too hot and I have to have it up. For Zach, by the way, everyone recommends that your partner also pack a bag with changes of clothes, things to keep them entertained. I don't want to be listening to his, you know, car podcasts if we're in there for a while. <laughs> I want him to have headphones of his own. But yeah, he can take his own bag and I think I will encourage him to pack it much closer to actual delivery time because obviously um, if she comes way before that, he can sort of pack fairly quickly anyway. So yes, but I have got a list for him of things that he might want to bring <laughs> as well. Anyway, my loves, I need to do some clearing up really um, because it's a bit of a tip in here and I do want to show you the barn, but I'm feeling tired. So I've done a little bit of clearing up. Everything's looking a bit neater. If you still see mess, you know, I did my best. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in here. Um, at the moment, so it's not perfect, but it's definitely time to show you Library Barn. So yes, in case it isn't clear, my mum designed all of this. So yes, it is not my doing, I cannot take credit for it. She will be very pleased that I'm showing you all because it looks so nice. Um, so let's begin. So this is the door in, and then to the left we have, I've just been watching a bit of Are You The One, we have this little setup. So this kind of is probably the least finished part of the barn. So the stove is obviously going to sit on this metal here. Um, I'm probably going to move the TV to the other side, maybe put the coffee table in the middle, bring the sofas closer together. It's got the most beautiful chandeliers and they're really, they're not coming up very warm on camera, but they're really warm lights, which makes it feel very cozy in here. Not gonna be able to tell you where everything's from, but I do know that these sofas are from Caravan. And I don't know if you can tell, this is Zach's sofa, which I've not organized very nicely. And that is obviously my sofa because it's got the blanket, the hot water bottle, um, a little bit more propping up for me. Um, but yes, so the theory with this side of the room is that my mum wanted to keep some of the um, original cobbles, but also have a flat surface on which to put furniture and to be functional. We can see through them. In fact, let me put the lights on. It's really nice if I turn the chandelier off, all the cobbles lit up which is really really cute and it's very cozy then we do have some of the original cobbles coming down the middle of the room but with a rug on top for a little bit of warmth and then here are the bookshelves it's probably not looking its best <laughs> at the moment because because zach and i have so many coats with us we do have to keep some on the chairs it's obviously some on this rack here as well um, and I've got my hospital bag <laughs> open down there, which um, it will have to annoyingly be open down there probably for our remainder. But you can see how beautiful it looks. I love it. Um, so yes, if you didn't watch my top 2020 books video, um, this is my aunt's library. Um, she passed away a couple of years ago now and my mum and I transferred her library to Library Barn. Library Barn was originally <laughs> A called Library Barn. Um, before its renovation, it was along the, these walls that there were bookshelves and then there were stairs going up to the mezzanine from this side of the room. It is a lovely place to keep my aunt's books and to memorialise her library here. I might do a little bit more chatting through the library on in another vlog soon. This dining table is probably getting switched out for something bigger and longer. Um, we've nicked the chairs from another building. So yes, that's not staying. I think it's gonna be a little bit more of a bigger table. I love the beams on this side of the room and I just think it looks so, so nice. And we've also got this really nice console table um, on this side. It's a little bit messy at the moment because it's just covered in stuff from Christmas and all sorts. Um, but it looks really nice with the lamps lit when the lights are dimmed as well. And then we kind of come through the middle here. My mum's figuring out what she wants to put in these little alcoves. Zach and I put candles in them, but they have run out. Here's my birthing ball. And then we come into the kitchen. Wonderfully functional little kitchen. Another gorgeous light. This is a Devol kitchen, I know that much. And it's a Sebastian Cox style kitchen. That's the kitchen, we've got a little cooker, um, got a really nice copper sink over here. 
So that's that. And then on the other side, we have the bathroom. Again, another gorgeous room, more beams, more gorgeous Cotswold stone walls. Um, obviously we've only got a bath, we haven't got a shower as well. My mum has been asking us if we'd like to have a shower put in, but it's nice. It's very relaxing having more baths here. And um, I think we notice it more because we've been here for a long time, we've been here for quite a few weeks. And if we need a shower, we just go to a different building. <laughs> um, but yes, this is the bathroom. It looks very cozy with just the wall lamps on. And there's me. I thought I'd just show you this side of the room with the chandeliers off as well. So you can just see how cozy and warm it looks. And then we go up these spiral stairs. The bedroom. How cozy does that look? So yes, there's a nice mezzanine level up here. I'll turn the proper lights on just so you can see. Starting over here, we've got this really nice chest of drawers. I just had a moment thinking, is that his name? It is called a chest of drawers, isn't it? having a brain fart. So we've got this, it also makes good storage on the top here as well. We have a rack over here and a chair for a bit of extra storage just for now. Don't know that we would need it all the time when we stay. Shoes down there, annoying gap in the middle because I think I'm missing some. <laughs> I don't know where they are. This is my side, obviously looking much, much busier than Zach's side over here. Um, and I've got my pregnancy pillows now. Um, I added an extra element to my pillow fort. And then this is actually a door which leads out to some stairs. There is a shutter that goes on the top as well to, for privacy reasons, but you can't quite, I don't think you'll be able to see it now. But yes, there's some outside stairs which are very slippery, so I don't think we would use them <laughs> too much. How cozy does this look? I'll bring you up close to the lights because obviously they're blowing out a little bit. But how nice are those? I th I can't remember where this bed's from either. Ugh, I will try and remember <laughs> and um, list some bits for you down below. But I just love all the beams. So nice to look up to at night. That has been mine and Zach's cozy little home for the past few weeks and it's so, so nice. Like I said, nice for us to have a little bit of our own space and we've been super happy in here. If a little bit chilly, it's been a little bit chilly today, sorting out in here, but once we get the stove, it will be perfect. My mum's also gonna put another radiator back here. It's because it's quite a big space to heat, obviously, and we have been here at the coldest time of year. Um, it's been snowing and all sorts, so you do notice it a bit more. It's been lovely. I think when we have baby, um, she'll probably sleep downstairs, just for ease. Um, in a little bassinet or something. Um, although we won't be here for a while, probably after she's born, be back in London. I do, because obviously I am now eight months pregnant, I have been having to go down the stairs in the middle of the night for a wee. Um, but because I know there's stairs involved, I probably get up for a wee much less. I leave it a little bit longer. Obviously you don't want to leave it too long because nobody wants to get a UTI. Yes. I have been traversing stairs in the night, but it's been fine. Anyway, my loves, that's me done for the day, I think. Done my hospital bag, done a bit of a clear up, <laughs> done my emails. I would count that as a productive day at the moment um, in these crazy times. So I'm probably gonna head across for dinner soon. Zach is over there making dinner. I don't actually know what we're having specifically tonight, but I'm excited. So I'm gonna head over and have some food and just chill out for the rest of the evening. Hi my loves. So as you can see, I'm back in the barn. Uh, we had some dinner, it was very nice, had a hash very delicious, made by Zach, some salad. Um, then I had two iced buns. And I also, if you can see, removed my gel extensions. Basically never do this. I always, 
um, wait as long as I can to see if I can get Priya to do them for me because I like having nice done nails and I don't like doing my own. For example, my Halloween nails were on throughout that entire lockdown and they were on for a very long time. To be fair, I only had a couple of extensions and most of them were natural. And these extensions were getting so long and beginning to annoy me. So I did have to take them off. And I've got to say, although they look not great because I didn't take them off in the best fashion, um, I do just love a short nail. I was actually already sort of feeling a short nail before Christmas, but I thought Christmas nails, I'll get myself something long and then I'll go back short but obviously that didn't happen <laughs> but I'm pleased to be back to short nails I'll probably paint them at some point I feel like I want to just paint them a nice dark color for now but I'm feeling free um as you can hear a bath is running and I think that's it for the day do you have anything else to add Zach so I'll probably wrap this vlog up I hope it wasn't too boring but I've got lots of things planned actually I asked for questions on Instagram for a little pregnancy Q&A so I'm going to do that at some point that will definitely go up in the next few weeks we'll do some more vlogging I've got December books and January books I was going to put them together but because it's over the end of year period I feel like it's annoying to put them together because it's from 2020 and 2021 so I'm going to do two separate videos. I was going to maybe do a video, I've seen people do them before which is quite fun, when I asked, probably on Instagram so make sure you're over there if you're interested in this, for you to ask me to recommend you something <laughs> Zach, stop. Zach's doing a dance. If I turned the camera around, he would murder me. You asked me to recommend you something, so like recommend me a classic or recommend me a book for when I'm feeling down, recommend me a book for lockdown, recommend, you, you, you get the picture, and then I will recommend those books to you. Obviously I don't have my whole library to hand, so we'll see, maybe I'll wait till we get back to London to do that. Anyway, there's things happening. Ooh, also I did actually really want to mention, um, someone pointed out to me on Instagram just how many ads were on my top 2020 books video. So I'm really sorry if you watched it in those first few hours because it had like 14 ads on it or something ridiculous. It's something that YouTube is doing recently and my old brain has not caught up um, but I need to remember once the video is finished processing to go in and delete some of those mid-roll ads because um, they're adding like a million, especially on long videos. Um, so I'm going to try and remember to do that in the future. But please, if you see a million ads on my video, um, just know that I personally have not done that and I, for whatever reason, have forgotten to delete some <laughs> because I know it's kind of ridiculous. Hope you guys are doing well, looking after yourselves and being kind to yourselves. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Um, I will see you very soon. Bye. Hi guys. So I'm just coming in at the end of this vlog on a different day to unfortunately deliver some sad news. I really <laughs> don't want to keep delivering sad news to you all. But over the weekend we very suddenly lost Mimi. She was obviously kind of unwell, something was wrong. She wasn't eating her treats. So that's when you knew something was wrong. And she went to the vets and the vets said they needed to do emergency surgery. And he said either it will be operable or it will be inoperable. And I sort of knew in my soul then that it might be the end. I have watched a fair amount of Super Vet in my time and I know what happens if during surgery they decide something is inoperable and that is what happened. So they did put her to sleep during the operation whilst she was still under general anaesthetic. So obviously it was a bit devastating not being able to say goodbye to her properly. And obviously when she went off to the vets, um, we sort of didn't know how serious it would be. She has actually eaten stuff before and got kind of like a stomach um, infection or whatever, which can be dangerous in itself as well. Um, but I thought, we just thought it would be something along those lines. So obviously, yes, it was very sad that we didn't get to say goodbye properly, that we didn't know that it was her last day with us. But there are lots of things to be grateful for. She was coming up for 11 this month 
and so she was coming to the end of her um, natural life and I think that um, cancers and stuff do get Labradors at this age um, so she did live quite a full life I wish she'd have gone for another four years or so I do know labs also go until they're 14, 15 um, but of course it was not meant to be the reason you haven't seen her that much and she hasn't been on the vlogs that much is because she's actually pretty much for almost a year been living out here at the farm with my stepdad and she loves it here it's her favorite place in the world and she was also beginning to really struggle with the stairs in London so that meant every day didn't pose any challenges to her here she could go on long walks and really enjoy parading around her territory um, so really it's been fantastic that she's had the last year of her life here and even better that she had kind of her closest pack, her closest family here over this kind of Christmas lockdown for weeks and weeks and weeks. So even though she did leave us a bit suddenly and we weren't really prepared and we didn't say a proper goodbye, I suppose we were really doing that over the last few weeks and spending some quality time with her. Zach and I have taken her for some really nice walks through the flooded fields and finally I suppose it came over her quite suddenly I think it developed quite quickly and um, then the sort of pain and discomfort began quite quickly as well I mean she may have been ill for a much longer time she was on pain relief um, anyway for her joints and stuff because that's what happens to her labs as they get old uh, so hopefully she wasn't suffering too much but I suppose we can be grateful that it did seem to come on more suddenly. She seemed to be enjoying life still, going on walks, eating everything she could convince us to give her until, you know, that last day. So I'm glad she didn't deteriorate over a long period of time or suffer for long, um, as far as we know. So there are things to be grateful for and I try to remind myself. We got Mimi in 2010, I believe, which is as long as I've been doing YouTube as well. So. You have all really seen her grow up. I'm sure I could comb back through a lot of old footage and find some really nice footage of her, but I think that's a bit painful for now. And also it would take me ages because, um, yes, she's been a prominent part of my life for a very long time. And I know lots of you care about her and have been wondering where she was. So I'm really sorry that I have to deliver such sad news today. I think she lived a very happy life and she's a very lucky dog and we loved her very much. Obviously very sad she will never meet the baby. I was very much looking forward to that. She probably won't have remembered Mimi. It would have been nice to have pictures of the two of them together. And yes, it's been very emotional. I've done a lot of crying. <laughs> But um, yes, she is now buried here at the farm, so she'll be here forever, which she'd be very, she'd be very pleased about. And we will miss her very much. We are missing her very much. So anyway, my loves, um, I'm gonna go now. Um, I wanted to tell you because, like I said, I know lots of you always ask about her, and she has been around my whole YouTube life, and um, she was very special. And so I felt like you needed to know, um, but I hope I didn't make you too sad. But yes, I've been trying to celebrate her life in my head. I've written down all the things I want to remember about her and I made an album on my phone of all my pictures and videos of her. And yes, she'll always have a very special place in my heart because she was our first family dog, really. My grandma's always had dogs and I've always loved dogs and I've always loved my grandma's dogs, but, um, Mimi was our sort of first family dog. Thank you for watching today. Sorry that we had to end this vlog in such a sad way. Um, I did want to put it in this vlog because I know she appears in this vlog. And uh, I just wanted to let you know before we move on to other things. And so you know what's happening when I'm vlogging in the future. But yes, thank you guys for watching today and I will see you again very soon. Bye.